Good morning. We're going to look at Romans 8, 29, and 30 over the next couple of days. This is very rich. It's very theologically rich. Um, and it's, it's theologically unequivocal in the sense that it's pretty clear what it's saying. So we want to be very clear about what it's saying um, and, and, and get into it theologically a bit. So let's read verses 29 and 30. And uh, we'll probably comment just on 29, or at least a portion of 29 this morning. Romans 8, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. Okay, a few things here. First, just a general observation uh, at sort of a 50,000 feet is you can see this as kind of a golden chain of things. So you see initially he foreknew, he predestined, um, that predestination has to do with the conforming to the image of his son. We'll come back to that. He called he justified and he glorified. So the first thing you see are these five pieces, foreknown, predestined, called, justified, glorified. The second thing is you see a common thread running through and that is those, meaning whoever it is that he foreknew, that same continuity exists to glorification. Foreknew, predestined, called, justified, glorified. You see that? So there's a continuity here. Now that continuity is important because that continuity gives us a sense of reliability. It gives us a sense, a clear sense, that whatever it is that God starts, God finishes, and that he finishes it for all those that he starts it. Now, what does it mean to, let's just take the first term, what's it mean to be foreknown? To be foreknown here is more than looking down through time and seeing something. Foreknown has to do uh, with a setting of affections on, in a sense, a kind of choosing. Uh, the word is prognosko. Now, in the Greek Septuagint, it's used to translate the Hebrew word yada, which was used often in the relational sense of know. To know someone, like think of, uh, of Adam knowing Eve. Adam knew Eve and she gave birth to a child. Well, you know that it's more than head knowledge that it has to do with a kind of um, interactive relationship that yields a particular result. So knowledge in this sense is a kind of relational knowledge. So for him to foreknow is a kind of relational knowledge wherein he's setting his affections on. Perhaps what might help is to see another use of prognosco. And another use of it is found in 1 Peter 1 verse 20, and this is about Jesus. Speaking of Christ as the Lamb without blemish, in verse 20 it says, He was foreknown, prognosco, before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you. Well, what does that mean? And not just that God knew about him. It's something deeper. It's that God had set his affections toward him. God has placed his affections upon him, having a particular plan to that end. Similarly, when we look at this chain in Romans 8, we see, for those whom he foreknew, he also. And then we'll talk tomorrow about he'll, he also. What else is it that he did? For now, it's enough to know that he set his affections upon you if you're a believer, and he will carry you forward all the way to the end of verse 30. So I hope the next couple of days of thinking through this will give you confidence in the fact that God has a golden chain in store for you of these series of pieces that are deeply important to your spiritual standing in eternity. May the Lord bless you today.